यू आर लिसनिंग टू अ मिंट प्रोडक्शन प्रॉट टू यू बाय एच टी स्मार्ट कास्ट रिसेंटली द रिजर्व बैंक ऑफ इंडिया इश्यू रेगुलेशन दैट एम टू सेफ गार्ड द इंटरेस्ट ऑफ क्रेडिट कार्ड कस्टमर्स While checks and balances already existed in this area, the new guidelines have tightened the rules by introducing penalties on card issuers if they don't follow fair practices. Customers will also have the option to choose their own billing cycle, which will enable them to manage their debt payments more efficiently. To understand how credit card customers stand to gain from these regulations, we have invited Raj Khosla, who is the managing director of My Money Mantra, as the expert speaker for today's episode. Hi. Welcome to Why Not Mint Money, a personal finance podcast where we help you understand basic money concepts and share strategies for you to build your wealth. So let's get started on your money journey. Hello, Mr. Kosla. Welcome to Why Not Mint Money. Hi, Shipra ma'am. And so nice uh, to be part of your program and to answer your questions and more importantly, from my perspective, to also learn th- there from. Now on, you know, card issuers will have to take a written consent from customers before issuing cards or adding any kind of services on top of them. So, how how do you think the this guideline stands to benefit card holders? Guidelines, as a whole, frankly, you know, are are really excellent, and I'm and I'm so happy they came when they came. But uh, you know, earlier certain issuers uh, of of credit cards used to cross sell. or bundle the uh, the plastic you know with the other banking products be it a home loan or a personal loan or for that matter even a savings bank account so they could they, they would bundle the credit card with that already uh, uh, you know another another one of their products but now a separate consent has to be taken from the customer for card issuance also certain issuers bundle an insurance to take care of liabilities arising from lost cards frauds etc but going forward banks will have to now take an explicit consent you know for this bundling you know the customer will have to activate his card by giving uh, via otp his consent uh, within 30 days from issuance and if the consent is not received within the stipulated time the card will be closed with no charges and no effect on the customer's credit history there were no surprises for the customer he or she will always be in control and can decide for their own preferences and priorities of, you know whether they want a card or not i mean it isn't sort of all compulsorily handed out to them so it's a good measure all right and you know the guidelines also say that uh, the issuer will have to honor card closure request within 7 days so how long did it typically take before these guidelines came and you know what were the kind of challenges that the customers had to face when they wanted to close a card see how long it took was frankly case to case but i mean it it certainly did not take 7 days it took you know much longer than that you see certain banks took credit card credit card closure request over snail mail as well so which always resulted in some delays and sometimes the request getting lost often leading to customer being charged fee on account of the delays and a multitude of disputes essentially most irritating from a customer perspective but the new rbi guidelines have clearly stipulated a much better process uh, from a customer uh, angle rbi has ma- has clearly mandated a card closure within 7 days from receiving the request and more importantly shipra ma'am you know the mediums through which the closure request can be made has been expanded dramatically to include digital channels like internet banking mobile banking ivr dedicated email id etc so once the closure has been effected a confirmation has to be compulsorily sent to the customer It, you know truly excellent i think this is a great uh, you know a great item for the customer because within 7 days he has to close it and then he has to also say, you know receive a confirmation that's right really super So another important guideline that uh, you know stood out to me was that now on the card issuer will also have to give a breakdown of with examples and calculations of the implications of paying minimum due payment. So how do you think this benefit the customers? Uh, the APR rate, essentially the rate of interest charged on credit cards, is by far the highest compared to any other personal finance product. So it is therefore no surprise that credit card issuers. encourage customers to revolve the outstanding balance by paying only a minimum of minimum of 5% of the total amount due and to revolve the balance 
at a really steep rate of interest out. I could say exorbitant, you know. We're seeing that the APR of 3.5% per month charge on cards translates to an astounding annual rate of 42%. And, and this is, uh, you know, clearly extortionist. But okay, now, uh, say, uh, you know, the rules, as per the rules, a clear and upfront explanation of the interest rate and any other attendant charges you know, will enable the customer to make a more informed choice regarding the cost involved in revolving the outstandings on his, his or her credit card. So it's again a superb measure. Completely agree with you that the customer will be able to make an informed choice because a lot of customers, I mean, whatever con- uh, interactions I've had with credit card users, they're not aware of the kind of interest rates that they have to pay on credit cards. So yeah, definitely. Uh, okay, so coming to the last question, sir. Uh, customers will now also have the option to change their billing cycle. So, you know, how how do you think that they should set their billing cycle so as to optimize payments on credit cards? Customers are now being given an option to change their billing cycle, but this change can be done only once. Uh, It's not multiple options, right? And this facility of uh, billing cycle selection is, is useful in two ways. First, customers can set their due date according to the date that they receive their salaries or their or their payments so that the settlement for the amounts due can be made immediately and efficiently, thereby avoiding any unplanned interest cost on their credit card spends. So that's the first item. Second is, and this happens frankly often enough, if the customer is using multiple cards. For example, if he has two cards, now he can set the billing dates 15 days apart so that he can engineer a larger amount of free credit through the teaming and leading method, namely adjusting the spend in line with the settlement dates. If you're coming up, let's say, to the 15th, and that's your settlement date of one card, you should, if there's any big spend, you should then start spending on the other card. Where it's a little bit of adjustment, you can, with multiple, uh, having chosen two different settlement dates for your two separate cards, you can actually enhance the amount of free credit that you are able to access. So yeah, this is also a good facility. That's right. Okay, so uh, that brings us to the end of uh, our podcast. Uh, thank you very much, sir, again, for taking out the time to you know share your views on, on this very important topic for credit card customers. Thank you, Shipra, ma'am. Thank you very much. Indeed. That brings us to the end of today's episode. If you would like to know more about this topic, or make a suggestion of a personal finance topic that you would like us to cover, I can be reached at Twitter under the username of Shipra Singh Sorot and on LinkedIn at Shipra Singh. Thank you for tuning in. See you in the next episode. This was a Mint production brought to you by HD Smartcast. HD Smartcast.